Okay. So, the, uh, the reason I got, we got into common knowledge was because we were talking about dominance and we were talking about do and in that the common knowledge of rationality was used. And then I said, let us get into a formal definition of common knowledge. The main point of uh, behind telling you all this is A, exposing you to this, uh, this, uh, this result firstly and secondly also sensitizing you to the fact that one has to be, uh, there is a formal and rigorous way of thinking about games. Okay. And this, this is the sort of development that goes in the background in, in establishing any properties. If you want to derive any properties about games, this is how you need to uh, go about developing it. Okay. So, now let us study specific game classes. Okay. And uh, the simplest class and also the earliest class that was studied is what is called is the class of zero sum games. Okay. So, I will consider the case where the, there are finitely many strategies for each player. So, that many times the math is easier. So, finitely many strategies for each player. What is a zero sum game? A zero sum game basically comprises of two players. Okay, so there are so the uh, there are just two players, player one and player two, and the utilities of the players are such that they sum to zero. Okay, so you have if you take uh, the utility of player one. when when player 1 plays strategy x1 player 2 plays strategy x2 that is equal to utility negative of the utility of player 2 when he plays uh, when player 1 plays strategy x1 player 2 plays strategy x2 and this is true for all x1 and x2 okay so regardless of what they end up uh, uh, the profile of strategy is chosen by the players the payoffs that they get are exactly negative of each other which means profit to one player is necessarily loss to the other player. Okay, there is there is in in such a situation, this is a very this this sort of problem class is, is instructive to study because in such a situation there is no scope for players to hope for cooperation. Okay, there is nothing for them to cooperate on. Anything that one gains is the is a loss to the other player. Okay. So, therefore, there is no dilemma about cooperation and therefore, uh, therefore, in many ways the analysis is also a lot easier. Okay. So, in you can say in this case pairs are sort of enemies, you know in essentially whatever one loses is is gain gain to the other. Okay. Now, we since we are going to consider these players uh, with finitely many strategies, one way to write this out is is write out u now the uh, is is just as a matrix. So, you can write u as a matrix, let us call this matrix A. So, you can arrange this matrix in this sort of in, in the following way. You have the rows of the matrix are, so rows are the strategies of player 1 and the columns are strategies of player 2. Okay. These are strategies for player 2. Now, what do I mean by arranging this in the matrix? I, you can arrange this in the matrix in the following following way. Essentially, every entry here, okay, now corresponds to just the entry in a, in 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 any any row comma column of this matrix is just comprise is just depicting the payoff of that player of player one. Okay, so this here is the payoff of player 1 or utility of player 1. Okay. So, this is simply denoting u 1 and is the reason I am denoting only u 1 here. So, u 1 this is just u 1 of i comma j. Okay. So, this is i row and j column. The reason I am denoting this by u 1 of i comma j is because is simply because u 2 is going to be just negative of this. Okay, so, it is enough to denote everything with just one number which and that is de depicted in this matrix. 
So, in other words, what we can think of is the following that player 1 is who is picking the rows and player 1 is looking for the least value in this matrix. So, player 1 is looking for the least value in this matrix because he is looking to minimize u1. Yeah, you or whatever cost. So, we are always thinking of minimizing. So, player 1 is looking for the least value in A by, by choosing rows. And player 2 who is the one who is choosing columns is looking for the largest. Okay, all right. So, so in other words, the entire game, zero sum game, can be depicted with basically just one matrix. Okay, one matrix, and uh, the the uh, what's going on is player one is looking the uh, the row player is looking to choose a row to get the least possible value. The player, uh, the column player is looking to choose a column to uh, to get the largest possible value. Right? Okay. Now, given this, given that this is what uh, players are looking to do. So, let me just denote this thing here i a i j is now the cost or whatever your player player 1 when player 1 chooses row i and column and player 2 chooses column j. All right. Now, given that this is what uh, play, uh, play, uh, players are trying to do, the, each player is trying to get um, you know pull in opposite directions basically player 1 wants to get the least value, player 2 wants to get the largest value. One possible way of playing is is that each player looks at the worst possible damage that the other could do. Okay, you because anything that the other player does in his own benefit is damage to me, right? So then I can ask, okay, what is the worst damage that this guy, the other guy, could do? Okay, so what? How do I quantify that? Well, one way of talk, the way to quantify that is the following. So, so. I can look for, so player, the row player can look for a row i star such that, so what is the maximum damage that he can get when he plays a row i? Suppose player, suppose the row player plays row i, what is the maximum damage that he can suffer? He wants the least value of a i j, right? So, what is the maximum damage that he can maximum over j right because the largest value the worst case that could happen is that the j could be is chosen such that this is the largest right the maximum over j of a i j and now the row player can say well i can choose an i such that the worst case damage is minimized i can choose my i such that the worst case damage is minimized that means, this is my worst case damage, this is the worst case damage from playing playing i, playing row i, right. This is the worst case damage from playing row i, that is equal, that is this and you want to minimize this worst case damage okay which means you choose your i such that this this the such that this value which is now a function of just i this value should be least so you choose a row i star such that this is this guy is greater than or equal to
you choose a row i star such that the worst case damage that that you get from i star okay is less than equal to the worst case damage that you can get from any other row remember he is looking for the least possible value but least possible value in what uh, it depends also on what the other guy would do so he is saying okay let me take the worst case of what the other guy could do okay so here he is taking the worst case of what the other guy could do when he when the row player chooses i star this is the worst case of what the other guy could do when he chooses i and he wants this to be better than the worst case in this okay now this is how row this is so i can define a row i star in this way so what is this essentially doing this is basically the a row i a choice of row i star like this is securing a certain payoff for for the player it is basically telling him that well i can at least get this much right because any a, this is the worst case this is the one that this is the what this is the dam, worst case this is minimizing my worst case damage anything if the player doesn't do the worst damage i'm still better and any uh, if i don't uh, 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 so or or any uh, uh, the uh, uh, any other uh, if i if i had chosen any other row then i would be you know there would be a possibly a case in which i could be worse okay so this is minimizing my worst case damage okay so now so what this does is so this is ensuring basically it it sort of curtails his loss says that well you cannot get you know worse than this so this we can actually give it a name because it, it has some kind of strategic consideration so we can give it a name and we can call it player this this here can be called the row row players security level okay so in other words it is and we do not this by v upper bar okay now and uh, the i star itself is called the row players security strategy so in other words, so let me write it again here v upper bar of a is simply this it is the minimum over i of the maximum over j of a i j it is so you look at the worst case over j and then you minimize that over i that is that is v upper bar of a so i have reasoned now from player one player one's point of view the player who is choosing the row okay i can do a symmetric reasoning like this from player two's point of view also right player two would also want to uh, look at the worst case damage and minimize the worst case damage for himself so what would that give you so would then choose a column you would choose a column j star such that so if he chooses a column j what is the damage that he worst case damage that he could incur it is it would be the minimum over i of aij right the row player is going to choose the least possible value so he looks at the minimum possible value of aij over all i and he says well now let me try to get the largest such value by choosing the j okay so you look for a a j star such that minimum over i j star okay and this again is now this is the security level of player 2 and j star is called the security strategy 
the security level of, of the column player is denoted V under bar of A. It is a function of just A. Okay. So, V under bar of A is uh, is maximum over J of the minimum over I of A I J. Is clear? Okay. There is necessarily a unique security level for each player okay by because it is defined this way. Uh, there is at least one security strategy for each player because again of the way it is defined there could be multiple security strategies. So, the security strategies for both players then provide us a way a kind of a suggestion or a way of solving the game. We can say well each player plays uh, can can be said that you well anything that the other guy does is damage to you you look so you look at the worst case damage and play accordingly right and then you look for uh, and and uh, so essentially the pair of security strategies can be thought of as constituting a solution where would this logic fail what is not equal So, as a as a concept where would this fail? So, I could think of a solution concept in which both players play security strategies. You need not achieve the security level correct. So, in short it is possible so that row player plays i star which is his security level ok. But the column player has a best response which is not j star or, or the other way around column player plays j star, but the row player's best response is not i star. In, in that case there is room for each player to get better than the worst case that they were imagining right. And then there you are you are basically at a situation where you are you can say well this is not a final resolution of the game because there is at least one player who would want to you know do better than uh, what he is doing in this situation and then then the whole analysis changes right. So, let us uh, so, so let us think about this a little more carefully first can you tell me what is the relation between v upper bar and v lower bar. So, V upper bar and V lower bar are so V upper bar was what? V upper bar was min over i max over j a i j. V lower bar of a is max over j min over i a i j. So, the V upper bar and V lower bar are actually uh, in uh, what they are doing is they are minimizing stroke maximizing, but in the different order in a different order right. In V upper bar you are first doing a maximization then followed by a minimization outside. In, in V lower bar you are first doing a minimization followed by a maximization outside. So, how are these two quantities related? Okay. So, actually the hint is in the notation itself. So, V upper bar is I. So, you can very quickly argue that V upper bar is always greater than equal to V lower bar. So, how do we prove this? Write this as a lemma. V upper bar is always greater than equal to V lower bar. Why? Okay, simple uh, the quick proof. So, here is V A i j ok. Now, I take the so uh, let us start with the left hand side which we are looking at V upper bar. So, now this here is always this here 
a i j this is always less than equal to the maximum over j of a i j or necessarily and it is also greater than equal to the minimum over i of a i j ok and so and this is true for all for all i j if you if you are if you are getting confused with this let us i can put a i dash here and a j dash here ok so a i j is always greater than equal to the minimum over i dash of a i dash j and less and less than equal to the maximum of a i j dash of a i j dash ok maximum over j dash of a i j dash ok all right. So, therefore, now what have I got here if you see the right hand side here the right hand side is a function of only j the left hand side is a function of only i and so you have a function of i which is always greater than equal to a function of j so these are functions of two different variables one is a function of i the other is a function of j and the function of i is always greater than equal to the function of j okay so it's always flying above the function of j right so its least value will be the least value of the function of i will necessarily be greater than equal to the maximum value of the function of j right so which means therefore that min min over i max over j if you want i'll still keep the dash here i j dash is greater than equal to so i'm just writing the extreme to and that that's sufficient for us so that's this is max over j min over i dash that's nothing but v upper bar greater than equal to v lower bar all right so now what would be wonderful is if these two values would be equal because then what what it would do is basically give you that the best response to a security strategy is a security strategy ok the response of player uh, of the row player being you know thinking of the worst case is that the sec the column player actually plays the worst case and likewise column player imagining the worst from the play row player in fact ends up hap it ends up happening that the row player ends up playing the worst case unfortunately that is not the case and so let us do an example and actually uh, we can see ok. So, if these two were equal right then basically it would mean that each player's projection about the worst case uh, uh, and each player's sort of uh, um, way of this sort of this kind of reasoning where you think of the worst case that could happen and that ends up actually coinciding. 